Hey everybody, so the playlist you're about to watch is just a short playlist series of videos that I made while I was at uh, Sleeping Giant uh, Provincial Park in Thunder Bay, Ontario with uh, two really good friends of mine, actually my brother uh, Ryan and our good friend Sean from Montreal. And the reason I decided to upload these videos was because I am a disabled person. I'm a, uh, I have a cerebral palsy, I walk with crutches, and I was taking on the challenge of a 22 kilometer uh, hike, I guess you could say, of the Sleeping Giant. Not really sure what I was getting into. To, but uh, it turned out to be quite the uh, experience and really the videos that follow this aren't like really they don't tell the whole story of what exactly went down I mean at some point when it got really difficult we stopped taking videos obviously because something more important than that but uh, for what they are worth they're 11 short videos about a minute each I hope you do enjoy them and I'll have one last video the 12th video just to talk more about my experience as a disabled person at the sleeping giant with two of the greatest friends that I could have so thanks for watching Yo, cats, this is the first stop on the journey. This is the sea lion. Here's Sean Pru. I'm not a sea lion. He's not a sea lion. <laughs> sea lions, the sea lion's back this way. I cannot, unfortunately, m handle the sea lion. Ryan is somewhere attempting to handle the sea lion. Sean has kept keeping me company. We're going to go back to the main trail in like two sec. But uh, this is kind of what we're dealing with. And uh, there's some other crazy shit back there which I can't traverse. Sea lion, sorry, buddy video documentary version two uh i'm still at the sea lion post sean and ryan are up checking out the sea lion and i am holding the fort until they get back apparently it's pretty sweet up there cannot traverse it as i mentioned in the first video i'm trying to be overly dramatic on purpose but here i am and my iphone's getting soaked wet so i'm probably gonna not do this for much longer this video here but i am here holding it down while these guys get some sweet pictures for me to revel in later sea lion I'm out. Video progress report episode three. We're here in front of a sweet rock wall. On the way, there's Ryan. There's Sean. We all crossed the river that we shouldn't have. There's a bridge. We just wanted to be assholes. Yeah. Me and RJ got soakers. Sean did. Yeah. That's progress report. I'll report back later. <laughs> Sleeping Giant video diary four. We found a like unmarked trail, so we just pursued it. And there's RJ. There's Sean. And uh, if RJ could shift to the right or left a little, there's some weird canopy outcropping, which is kind of cool. I'm pretty sure somebody put it there. Okay, somebody somebody built like a lean-to here. As you can see, like, look at these cans here. Somebody's made this like their makeshift home. So we should probably go before we get a hobo axed. Like, Tomahawks are flying by our heads. But uh, anyway, here's a strange outcropping with a lean-to and some old, old cans. Who knows, man? Who knows? That's video four. Video episode five, the wild Sean Prue steps into the ravine along with the ri wild Ryan Jackson. The ravine's actually very very interesting. I'm gonna try to get a closer look, but I'm crippled, so don't fault me. Pretty nice, pretty interesting. It goes, there's like some running waters and whatnot. Ask actually. Nope, you're good. <laughs> Episode four or five, can't remember. Found a uh, outcropping of beachy area, covered in like these shale rocks that I almost tripped over coming down. Now there's Sean, there's Ryan. We noticed a lighthouse in the distance on that little island there. I probably can't see it when I'm ta taping. I'm gonna keep the video going and walk a bit forward. Yeah. There's like gullies that will kill a crippled kid here. <laughs> look at this, this is like some ruined beach of just shale rock. Like not shale rock, but just like loose stone. And like crippled kids with four legs. Not a good chance. But anyway, I'm gonna shut the video. Here it is. You might take a rest here, I'm not sure. It's uh it's about 1 30. We haven't made we haven't made Tea Harbor yet that I know of, so we're gonna be a long ways yet. But it's been really interesting, really fun. So, uh, well, I'll catch you on the next video. Peace. So we're about to make Tea Harbor. This is uh, video six. Hi, guys. Yo. Yo, yo, yo. So we're just uh, assessing the map right here. And uh, thank you, RJ. And uh, our next destination is, what, Lettonins Bay? Is that part no, of it's our... it's past, I think. Yeah, it's past us. I think we're going to be here, and then we go okay. up this way. 
Okay, can you read like the like the little blurb again? What blurb? Like the write up that says we're going Talus Trail, right? That's where we're going. Um, do, do, do trails along the Cabane Trail past Tea Harbor. The hike continues up the Talus Lake Trail. Right. So the one point five. Then follow kid. the signs to the top of the giant. Okay. Oh, sweet. So okay, this is our next Good. destination. One point five km, Talus Lake Trail Junction, and top of the giant trail. Sick guys, that's only 1.5 away. I am the giant. Sean is the giant, and I'm the I'm the disabled kid. And there's crippled baggins over crippled here. Crippled baggins, and there is I believe yeah, what's Tea Harbor. So we're gonna go check that out. Might have another video then. Anyways, that's it for now. Episode six is completed. You'd be the first one. Just a quick video. Yeah. We did reach indeed Tea Harbor. It's like a little rest stop kind of with bad log seating. I wouldn't recommend the seating at all. Uh, that's Sean's advice as well. It's like finding a bonfire in Dark Souls, so this is like a momentous occasion. <laughs> Anybody that plays that game. And we're about uh, still one, obviously 1 1.5 kilometers away from the next spot we need to get to, so we'll be on our way soon just munching on some granola bars Not and sure. enjoying other delicacies as they may be provided. Ryan used the outhouse for the first time. Not in his life, but on the trip. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll talk to y'all later. Buddy. Episode 7, RJ's loving it. Sean, Sean's loving it also. And I am also loving it. We didn't get any cheeseburgers, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> we, we didn't get any cheeseburgers, though. We should have, probably. <laughs> Kyle, bring us some cheeseburgers. Kyle, get some cheeseburgers. All right. Air drop, air supply. Peace out on episode 7 of uh, Sleeping Creek, Giant yeah. Trek. Narrated by Cripple Kid. Peace. <laughs> Hey y'all, uh, this is video 8, and this is an interesting scenario we find ourselves in. Um, what, right? Uh, we gotta go top of the top of the giant trail junction and Talus Lake Trail is what we gotta do. Um, and that, that, that line says it's a hard one. See that line? That says hard, which means not for cripple kids. However, when we look at this sign that Ryan's reading right now and taking a picture of, it says we have to go this way. Because danger of falling rocks has closed a different trail. So, if I'm understanding everything correctly, we must go we'll down fall. the hard lane. Sometimes, Ryan, you just gotta roll the hard six. Let's do this. Report back if I die. <laughs> the hard six inches. Hey, everybody. Ridiculous news. Hard trail is hard. I'm uh, sitting down because I am in the process of hoisting myself up, whatever you see behind you. Tons of shit that probably I can't even do. But I'm not giving it up because uh, still doing this. Ryan and Sean are scouting up ahead for me. And uh, I don't know, this is ridiculous, honestly. Like, whatever happened to this trail? I don't know. Alright. I don't know what's going to happen from here, but... Right now I'm in the process of hoisting myself up on my ass with my arms and getting Ryan and Sean to lift me as well. Uh, pretty big challenge for a disabled person. Uh, I don't know when the trail turned to, like, maniacal. But, here we are. I will message later. Oh god damn it. I just killed a bug. Hey yeah, just uh <laughs> Hey guys, we're here. We've got we've progressed four steps because these guys are carrying me like champions. Shawnee, I don't know if this can I'm see. A champ. I'm a champ. Ryan the champ. I'm trying to be a champ. We've got higher than I last video logged. There's a lot to go though. We're trying. We're just trying to go one step at a time, carry my ass and then make sure our footing is good and so on and so forth. Hopefully this is the ridiculous part of it, you know? Hopefully. Hopefully. All right. Peace. Hey, y'all. Battery at three quarters here. Audio log number 10, I think. Look at how far we've come. It's quite a ways. These guys are trooping, carrying me at this point. Like firemen, not firemen carry, but like stretcher carry me. <laughs> there's, no other there's no other alternative at this point. Um, guys, how you feeling? You Oh. Don't have to be heroes, but how are you guys doing? A little tired. A little tired. <laughs> <laughs> I can use some water, but I'm good. Okay, we can all use some water. Let's get our bags. I uh, hand crawled for a little bit. 
Now we're just gonna do that again in a bit and we're gonna get over this last hump and hopefully that's the craziest part of the journey but we expect there might be something else. Hopefully there's not just really steep things I can't step over. That's the only thing. My endurance is fine right now but uh, it's just um, the high steps. So anyway, that's audio log number 10 and we're making progress. Our crutches, bags, and everything are up just up on the above step. I already deposited earlier. Anyway, so we're gonna take a I think a group photo here. My knuckles, look at them. That's the proof of the like proof of the damage being done. Um, I don't know if you can even see what I just showed you, but anyway, they're dirty. They're dirty and these guys are dirty and shoes are falling apart. My mind's dirty. <laughs> Sean's dirty. Just in general. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Peace. Hey, uh, this is video 11. I am uh, camped out at the base of a rather steep hill. Ryan and Sean have gone up ahead to experience the top of the giant. It's pretty much, it's, well, it's, it's decided that I won't be able to make it up there, and I agree with that assessment, of course. So for the best situation, what they're going to do is they're going to get up there as fast as they can and enjoy that sight and take some pictures and whatnot. They're going to come back and get me. So right now, I am just uh, getting through this alone uh, with a couple bags of stuff and whatnot and just chilling. So hopefully it all works out um, and they'll be back soon. Um, I might just keep talking for a bit. Who know, we don't know how long they'll be quite yet, but they can move a lot faster without me than with me, especially on the steep stuff. It took a long time getting through some of the stuff, so I can only hope that it all turns out. Hey, uh, this is the 11th, I think, and final video of, uh, what should be like the, the most difficult trick of my personal life. Also a very good memory, though, as well. We spent 12 hours well, in the wilderness uh, on a trail hiking that could take anywhere between 5 and 8 hours. So obviously we're on the plus side of the, the, those of those recommendations, but I guess that's what you happen. That's what happens when you have a disabled kid in the crew. But lucky for me, I had a number of fine companions. Sean, you guys can't see him. He's just pitch just pitch black. Driving. He's driving, and we're still on the road actually from the park, uh, and on like on the way back. So that'll probably be about another 25 minutes until we reach. Homeland. And Ryan's in the back seat. Fine to Yeah. Yo, yo, Ryan. And then, uh, so you know, you know what? Like, we're we're spent as fuck. We are just like ripped. But um, you know, I don't know. I think we're feeling pretty triumphant at the same time right now. So, so welcome uh, to Thunder Bay, boys. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Thunder Bay, the fuckers. Peace. Is that quick? Hey everybody, so I just want to do one last video after those 11 videos are done just to talk about what it was like. I mean, doing the Sleeping Giant as somebody who has crutches, who walks with crutches, you know, it's pretty difficult, I'm not going to lie. Uh, you might have seen some of the difficulty, but again, a lot of those videos don't really capture the full difficulty because when it becomes really difficult, you stop taking photos, right? You stop taking videos, you stop doing any of that, and all you can think about is just getting through it and uh, you know i'm so lucky to have you know my friend sean and uh my brother ryan who we just call rj uh there with me because there were there were times um during the trek um where literally sean would be holding on to my hoodie and ryan would be bracing me from the front so i could shimmy down a a piece of a parcel of land big enough for a person with two legs shimmying sideways but i have four legs so you can imagine how difficult that was at one point i was trying to traverse down a very steep narrow area and it's narrow enough again that i have to side shimmy and most people with two legs side shimmy 
Um, and my two crutches are there, kind of, we're trying to keep them in bounds. And I've got, you know, Sean holding me on one side and Ryan bracing me on the other. And, and uh, at one point, I, I, I bring my crutch around and towards a big tree stump, which is really the only thing separating this path from like sort of tumbling into a, a very dangerous ravine type looking area and i put my crutch on the ground where i probably shouldn't have and you know it spl- spills right th- it, it, it sort of pushes right through cause it's just pure mud and it pushes like pure mud straight up to the handle and i swear to god i was scared out of my mind i thought i was gonna fall right over and, and topple just into this abyss and like break a leg and die or something that's honestly what i thought was gonna happen but because i had you know ryan and sean there they just grabbed me as hard as they could when i was like i was i yelled i was like oh shit you know because i thought i was going down and and in when that crutch went to the handle in mud you know this old old dead tree and everything and then, of course, like going down there, it was, it was so steep that I had to take every step, you know, very carefully with my regular legs and with my crutches as well. And then I had Sean, you know, or Ryan, both of them sort of creating makeshift blocks for me to just keep my feet in check, just putting their own foot sideways so I can anchor down onto it. So, man, I tell you what, if you had asked me if I could have done 22 kilometers, um, of of such of terrain like that and it wasn't all like that i mean for for a while it was easy for a while it was just length and longevity rather than difficulty but when we hit the talus trail um it got really really hard and i had to you know cr- climb up on my hands and knees as hard as i could like an animal just to get through there and then eventually you know sean and ryan and you see some of the videos when they're they, they've picked me up and we stopped to talk but then picking me up but they stretcher carried me eventually because you know like i was crawling on my hands and legs and like this is going to take like 30 more minutes we got to just carry them because i mean for a regular person now I have so many thoughts in my head about this, so I apologize if it's if if it's sort of every uh, every which way. But for a regular person, bounding those stairs that they had to carry me up probably took them about a minute, minute and a half. For me, just to pull myself up with my arms or or crawl on on all, all fours on there, uh, again things we didn't particularly get video of because we're too busy doing it. Actually, um, that took it took 30 minutes to get about five stairs, you know. So then at that point again, they're they're carrying me, and you know I can't say enough about what it took them to carry me because they're carrying me stretcher style like off a soccer pitch um up these stairs and the footing is not great i mean uh, i remember looking and I, I i remember telling them as they're carrying me guys watch your feet watch your feet watch your feet because at any moment uh, well I, sorry at one moment in in the course of that event ryan's foot my my brother ryan's foot is just like on the side on the edge and meanwhile sean's carrying me you know at the head area torso head area he's going backwards up these stairs which are pretty tough so we're doing one stair drop me one stair dropping me i'm lifting myself i'm crawling myself a little bit things like that man it was so difficult honestly it was the most difficult thing i've ever done and i never thought i could do it and if you, and if you would have asked me again let me just finish my thought before i cut myself off last time if you would ask me if i could have done 22 kilometers you know of 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 terrain like that you know i would have told you i couldn't do 22 kilometers on a straight carpet on a freaking red carpet you see what i'm saying and then that's what i that's what we end up doing together is 22 kilometers and the most difficult train i've ever done my muscles are like pushed to the max my arm muscles with just the crutches trying to keep me upright my leg muscles dead man i couldn't for the last hour you know it was getting really dark at the end and you know it was the sun was fading out we'd been there for 11 and a half hours at that point trudging on our way back had to go back up the way we came up the steep hills and everything sean and ryan bracing me back all the way up and everything else and then we just sort of devised a system for me to hop down each of those stairs instead of the ones that they stretcher carried me down uh, and it was you know and, and and the sun was setting and it was like sun was already pretty much gone the sky is pretty much like on the way to being pitch black and we're like huddled together not huddled together but we're trying to stay walking close together and um you know we're all like i'm sure we're all thinking like damn this is gonna get tricky you know there's a sense of urgency with all of us being like man are we gonna get out of here i mean alex is only moving so fast and that's um, by the way that's who i am i'm alex in case you don't know me i'm the disabled guy and i'm only moving so fast and and let alone not being able to move fast i'm i'm seriously like about to pass out in the last hour you know Uh, like i couldn't think really couldn't really talk just running on that pure desire to get out of there man and that's it's not not something i've ever experienced and 
you know, I'm really proud of, of what happened there and really proud to say that I was able to do it and really proud to say that I had the friends that were able to push me through that. It was not easy. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. And, but yet I did it and I couldn't get to the top. You know, I, I said that in a Facebook post earlier, but I mean, some people that may watch this may not be friends with me, but you know, I don't know what kind of audience this is going to get. It doesn't really matter, but uh, I couldn't get to the top. I couldn't get to the sleeping giant uh, top. There's just no way. The final stretch was just too, too steep. So I just, they just left me at the base while they checked it out. And then sitting in the, sitting in the forest by yourself is a, <laughs> is an experience in itself. And I'm a city slicker. I'm an urban kid. I'm a nerd. Like I'm a computer guy. I don't do this kind of thing, let alone, you know? So I'm sitting there all scared too, as you can see in the one video, you know, a lot of things going through my mind in that one video where I'm alone. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to see them again. You know, I could get eaten right there by a bear. And there's indeed, there was some rustling in the bushes and everything. And uh, they came down, they heard it. They thought I got had got eaten. And unfortunately for them, they didn't get to see the whole sleeping giant either because they want to rush down and make sure I'm not, you know, uh, alone for too long in the forest. But how do you even sum something like that up? You know, that's kind of what I'm struggling to do. I'm kind of struggling to tell some stories and sum up everything. And talk about what it was like, you know, what it was like to be a person on crutches to go through trails that are not designed for you, let alone for anybody else. And I'm sure an able-bodied person could wreck that in probably six hours, you know, could 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 get in and out in six hours without really much of a difficulty. For us, it took 12 hours, and let alone, uh, and, and sorry, and besides 12 hours, it took the concerted effort of my two friends, my two compatriots, to push me through things that I couldn't do, you know. And then to decide first, to decide secondarily that I wouldn't be able to do the final bit, you know, it's um, <laughs> you know, and it still took 12 hours. Imagine if we had gone up the top. Imagine if they did stretch a me, stretch a carry me up the top to that, to that, uh, to the peak of the giant. Man, that would have took 14, 15 hours. We wouldn't have got out there by dark at all. As it was, we just barely got out there and barely evaded our fear of wolves and whatnot, you know. But I just want to thank you for watching the videos, and I just want you to know that uh, nothing that you saw really encapsulated everything. Something I'm going to carry with me forever. It's something that I know, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done. Maybe I bit off more than I could chew, but at the same time, you're realizing what you're capable of. And that sort of realization about, I couldn't, I can do this. I can do something I didn't think I could ever do. You know, I, whether you're disabled or able, it doesn't really matter. But when you have that moment when you're like, I can overcome this and we're not going to make any excuses about it. We're just going to get through it together. You know, you sort of experience something in life where you're like, man, I can handle this, this and this and this and everything else. You know, a lot of people that know me know that I'm going through a thesis uh, right now in English literature. I'm not going to talk long about that, but I just want to say even that compared to the Sleeping Giant Trek, you know, I'm like, there's, there's been a lot of tough moments in my thesis and I'm, I'm sure some are coming up, but it's like, you know, if I could do the Sleeping Giant, if I could push it to where my body doesn't even like, is almost not functioning, but still pushing through, you know, still getting that help from my friends, still pushing through that final home stretch for that six kilometers back to the parking lot from the, from the trail there, um, the Caban Trail. You know, if I could think about doing 22 kilometers, actually for me it was 16 kilometers because I didn't do that top. But all of us together doing 22 kilometers, man, if I can do that as somebody who's not designed to do that, as a human being who's not fit to do that, um, man, that's something else. You know, that's, it, that, that, that's an experience, you know, that's that's a moment and that's something you keep with you. And I just want to say that I'm proud to have kept, to have achieved that. Something I would never do again. It's something that pushed me to a place mentally and physically I would not want to be in. But I'm, you know, I'm glad to have done it and to say I survived it. You know, to put it straight up, to say I survived it. I think one of the one of the, the paragraphs of uh, the trail we chose, the 22 kilometer signature hike of the Sleeping Giant. I, I believe that it should only be attempted by those in good physical condition. Well, I'm, I have a decent endurance for a disabled person, but I'm not in good physical condition. Who is with cerebral palsy? You know, that's not the class of people that you belong to. And yet we dared it and we got through it. We have pictures, we have smiles, we have laughs, we have stories, we have near death, we have fear, we have everything associated with being human in that experience. And I know I'm rambling. It's been about 11 minutes of a video here, of an audio set, just set to photos, probably on a loop. So apologies if, um, you know, you're you're bored, but thanks for listening. Uh, I just want to get a few words off my chest. I'm just really proud, man. I'm just really proud, and I got a lot of outpouring from Facebook people. A lot of people just, you know, love love uh, 
just love the achievement and just just proud of me for doing it and i'm proud of myself as well and i'm proud of my friends and i'm proud of you know the bond that was built there and like the brotherhood of you know sort of like fighting through the trenches in that difficult time not to be overly dramatic but that's kind of what it was so for what it was and for everything that it will mean to me in my life and as a disabled person doing something you're not supposed to do and succeeding you know to the best of your ability pushing it to the max and succeeding man that's that's unbeatable so i just want to thank my buddies uh ryan my well my brother ryan who's also my good friend at the same time ryan and then my my good friend sean as well and that, and everybody else uh who 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 uh who said anything positive about the experience um i just want to thank everybody so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it for what it was See ya. And lastly, I just want to thank uh, Sean Prue and Ryan Jackson for allowing me to use their pictures. They have a ton of great pictures of our trip there, a lot better than I could ever do. And uh, it, it really integral to that last episode there and uh, just giving that more full experience. Uh, so thanks, guys. Um, Sean Prue in particular, uh, that's P R O. O U L X uh, is an aspiring photographer. You should check him out on Facebook. Um, he's got a lot of great work, a lot of great images to look through. But uh, thanks again, Sean. Thanks again, Ryan, for letting me use that awesome stuff. Uh, and thanks for watching.